Now, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, uh, an entrepreneur from Nigeria. We were discussing about, you know, why there's no more success stories on the continent. And, uh, and for a lot of people, success is raising capital. And that's very interesting to me because uh, I always tell people, you know, raising capital is not success. If it was, then there wouldn't be no one who raised capital. And then after a few years or a few months even, you know, you hear that they closed down and all, and they raised millions of dollars. To me, there has to be some type of exit to be labeled a success, right? So on this video, I wanted to share the three key things that I believe that the ecosystem is missing. Um that will increase the number of success in this ecosystem, this startup ecosystem across the continent. Because uh, I, I, we, we've seen it, right? There's a lot, of, there's a lot more um, um, co-sharing space. There's a lot, you know, consultancy, coaches, all that is growing. I've been back on the continent now 10 years, no, 11 years. 2013, yeah, so 11 years. So I, I, I remember the ecosystem, the ecosystem has definitely evolved with, with, with time um, in a good way across the continent. Of course, some countries doing better than others. That's, a, that's another conversation for another day. But um, there's three key things that is still missing that very few, no one is really talking about. Number one, I will bundle it a government and corporate. You know, Af you know, African corporation and African government passing laws and policies, not for the, the, the corporation. Let's start with government. In the U.S., for example, any federal budget or, 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 or state budget, a percentage of it has to go to small and medium-sized businesses. We don't have such laws, or if we do, they're not reinforced. Uh, can you imagine? If 20, 30 percent of the, the the budget of a country will go to local SME, number one, it will eliminate this need of outsourcing all the time. Um, and when you outsource, guess what? You need dollars. You're paying dollars. Um, you can pay local currency when you deal with a local company. There's more accountability now because if they mess up, it's a local com uh, it's a local company. They have to be responsible. Um, and they, they, they're right there, you know, for accountability. For, for an outside company, it's very difficult to do so. And I hear stories all the time. A government contract, this company, the project didn't work out, they still had to pay. And then that's it. They got to fix it, right? So it's more money, budget going over. And I, I have my reasoning behind all this, but it's just the reality. Uh, the, sec the second thing is, uh, Africa, you know, big corporation in Africa. They also outsource a lot. If they had embedded system where they have to use local companies or local innovators, so on and so forth, the wealth transfer will be massive. Massive. It'll create, the ecosystem will grow much, much faster because now the money is flowing internally. It's a very good study that was done that why some community are richer than others because of how long the money circulate within that community. The longer, the better, you know. Um, it, it's, it's not physics, it's basic math, um, you know. And, and I never understood why we are not enforcing those type of policies instead of always looking for dollars and thinking. And this is a really a mindset issue. People think that... Every, you know, stuff from outside, especially from the West, is better than somebody can produce it locally. But that's another conversation. The second thing is my favorite thing. Uh, it's what's missing the most. As a matter of fact, in the U.S., the number one, uh, I won't say tool, but the, the, the number one vehicle of wealth transfer, wealth creation, is um, company getting bought. Every time a big co company or a company buy another business, there's a wealth transfer because a lot of time it's a cash transaction, right? So you, 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 you got that transfer of wealth. That's how you generate wealth, you know, when you, you know, transfer cash to 
to, to another entity. When you have a business and you have shares and all that, whatever they, 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 they mean on paper, that they, they're just on paper. Uh, it's not real liquid money, right? So you can come up with a valuation. You, I'm sure you guys have seen it many times. You, you see a valuation today, six months later, is, is one third of what it was and all that. That's just all speculation. That's just all, you know, someone said that's the valuation. Somebody has said approve it. Six months later, it might be something else. But when you sell a company or you merge with a company and they pay you for it or pay partially, that's a transfer of money. There's a transaction happening. And that transaction, especially if you're a startup innovator and all that, that really now means something, right? And those m a in Africa are non-existent for SMEs. They're just non-existent. And I did a survey. I mean, I, I've been researching and talking about this topic for a long time. I talked to a few m and uh, uh, people, um, and mostly are, are based in London, funny enough. And they tell you, to deal with a small company transaction is too expensive. The process is long. In Africa, it's even a layer of trust issues because um, you don't know if the documentation you're getting is real, so they got to deep, you know, dig deeper. And that cost is not worth it to the fees that they're going to get. And I know there's a way technology can solve most of it. Uh, there's a lot of value on those type of transactions, especially for corporation looking for innovation. What you see in Africa is most innovate, I mean, most corporation trying to develop their own solution internally, which end up being, I've, I've heard a horror story because the, the corporate culture is not for, is, is, is not enabling uh, innovation. It's not designed to innovate. It, it, the wheels move slower, the, you have, 10, 12 people that have to sign up on, on, on stuff and all that. And it's much easier and cheaper to acquire a company that has a technology you're looking for and incorporate it within your ecosystem than it is to try to develop it on a corporate standpoint. But we don't see that. We don't see M&A between innovators, startup or tech company and big corporation. And I think that to me is the most important missing ingredient. And I always ask m and guys, why are you guys not getting into that space? Well, as usual, nobody wants to be the first, right? They want to see, um, they want to check if there's uh, anyone doing it. And if it's successful, then you see a, a whole range. But that's really a space that is missing. And that's a space that could be a game changer for the continent. The last thing is, um, uh, it's how to expand. We all know how fragmented the market is in Africa. We all know how challenging the market is in Africa. Uh, on, when we're doing a kiosk business, we, we were distributing our kiosks in, in five, no, six different countries, including Rwanda. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And unfortunately, when you, when you join those accelerator programs or those organizations, no one has a structure to help you expand. No one has a real model and of course, you cannot have one model for all because it depends if you're a hardware product or hardware software product, uh, or just a strictly uh, application as a service product, so on and so forth. So, but there's no one that, there's no organization helping on that aspect. Um, you see in the US, for example, they have the trade.gov uh, organization. For those who don't know, I'll put the link somewhere. Check it out. Uh, those organizations, they help, they vet people from different countries. So you can reach out to them based on the sector you are in. They can just introduce you. There's a fee uh, involved, but still, it's much cheaper. Every time I used to go to a country, it used to take me a year to find the right person, right partner, potentially, or the right model and all those things. That's, that's another conversation. But there was no support system. There was no... You, what you see across Africa, you see a lot of vehicle for investors to come in those countries where they have offices, where you can go in. On, but there's no vehicle for local companies to go outside the country. And I'm not talking just a, a private sector federation vehicle, but I'm talking about a real vehicle, an organization that really can help you, um, 
that really does the vetting, that really can do the connection and all those things and do the matchmaking. Um, that's also a skill set, and that's missing in the ecosystem. So those are the three things. I think um, uh, the three main, main thing that I believe from my experience, I would love to hear from you guys what you think. Uh, if you have other ideas or, or what you, you know, other things that you, you think I've been missing that you think could be very important and make this ecosystem even more dynamic than what it was, than what it is today. Um, so put some comment below. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you think I'm wrong, just say so also. All right. Take care.